It's not a case of karma. It's not a case of justice. It's a case of love. You see, in order to be in heaven, you have to be consistent with the goodness of heaven. How do you get to that? You come to a place like earth, where you are taught, where you experience hearing about good and evil, seeing it, and if necessary, experiencing it. Until you come to the conclusion that bad things, namely that which would be abominable in a paradise place, are something to be avoided like the plague, and that good things, namely that make paradise wonderful and lovely, are to be embraced as your dearest, greatest benefits. It's not that God judges you, it's that you can't come into heaven and stay there until you are right for heaven. You know, you have to come to the conclusion that not caring for others is an evil thing, a rotten thing to do. You have to come to the point where you value caring for others. That one of your values is caring for others, caring for life. Perhaps, as in the Jesus story, that you love God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength. And your neighbour, the one that rescues you from dire straits, as your very self. Which, given your loving God with all heart, soul, mind and strength, doesn't seem to be much, but it's on a par with yourself. Your greater self is enlarged. But according to the Jesus story, which I find very desirable, is that God is your father. Dad, in fact. Not Victorian father, but kindly loving dad. And therefore, that says everything about heaven and really implies at root all that is necessary for heaven. You have to have values consistent with the notion that God is dad to all life his children, that he's an able God and loving and therefore acts and values accordingly and therefore you have to act and value accordingly in harmony with such and until you do well you're not in heaven and you're experiencing such experiences as ideally train you for heaven so that you can graduate. I don't know how long that takes. I'm not certain as it means reincarnation. I certainly don't think it implies judgment. It's not to be understood in terms of karma or law is to be understood in terms of love and what's needed to be consistent with loving kindness and fullness of eternal life. The rest is noise, religion, not necessarily consistent with 
the harmony of God's family, the host of heaven. Not a case of judgment. It's not a case of karma. It's not a case of authority and imposition. It's a case of loving relationship. And what's that? That is bound to truly mean. And what we truly desire, which is abundant life and eternal life, loving fellowship. And since we are to see ourselves as children of God, we assume God created such a situation, including our very selves, such that he would have fellowship and company. Didn't want to be alone. If he did something, he had a motive. If he had such a purpose, then he had a need. The most obvious need, when you create fellowship and family, is that you need it. <laughs> you value it. And until you value it, yourself, as a child of God, you can't be let loose in the family because you'll spoil it. So we send you off to school. Welcome to Earth. Is it one of the classrooms? I expect so. Bless you. And you are blessed in this understanding. I do not mean that I have proved it. I've simply said, this is what I value. What do you value? Bless you. Thank you, Dad. Heavenly Dad, I mean. Thank you, Heavenly Dad.